But first, I'd like to kick things off by introducing Erin Flynn. She's with the New England Institute of Technology, and we're going to talk about the first tech challenge. Erin, come on in. How are you? Hi, so good this Thanks afternoon. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. So, pretty exciting. Rhode Island First Tech Challenge is part of a broader umbrella yes. of the FIRST program. So, talk to us just a little bit about what FIRST Tech Challenge is. So, FIRST Tech, yeah, tech Challenge is sport for the mind. So, I noticed you were having athletic, uh, ath Olympic athletes here earlier. Um, so, this is sports for science and technology. So, um, First Tech Challenge is a worldwide organization uh, where the founder is Dean Kamen, and his belief was that math and science should be as fun as sports. So there are different divisions of First Tech Challenge, uh, First Robotics. There's the Lego League, which is ages 9 through 14. We have uh, my division, which is First Tech Challenge, which is middle school to high school, and then we have the high school division, which is the First Robotics Challenge. So there are three divisions. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of kids, students within Rhode Island participating in all different levels. So it's a great it's a great thing. And I think this is so cool. I've watched the videos of just the different challenges that there are and different competitions and when it comes down to it, kids are building robots, but there's so much more than that. Right. So we'll get right. into that. Um, talk to us just a little bit about, this is the 12th year that there have been competitions through a New England Tech. Talk to us just a little bit about what the students do uh, at ages 7th through 12th grade is what Rhode Island uh, right. First Tech Challenge is. So that's the level that we're going to be talking about today. Um, talk to us just a little bit about the program itself and how it all kind of works. So the programs are run through after school uh, clubs, they're run through home school clubs, they're run through high school and middle school classrooms. So the teachers get together, they, they recruit students and they work together to build a robot that's going to solve a problem. And every year the problem is different and every year it's a game and this year's game is relic recovery. It kind of has a uh, Indiana Jones kind of feel to it. But the robot is going to have to, uh, in teams, robots are going to have to pick up relics, they're going to have to pick up pretend jewels, they're going to have to balance on different things. So there's a lot of different aspects to the game. Um, and we have over 43 high school teams and middle school and high school teams in Rhode Island and they'll be competing in the December and January window and you can come to New England Tech on a Saturday and we'll have that posted on our website and you can cheer them on through the qualifying rounds and then we'll have our uh, state championship on Saturday February 3rd which I think is Super Bowl weekend and we'll hope we'll be cheering for lots of teams that weekend um, and that's a great event that's held at our automotive center off uh, Route 95 and the 32 teams earn their way to the championship. It just, it's incredible, and I encourage people, we'll put a link so you can so you can see just how the whole program works. Let's talk about why this is important. Uh, team building for one, right. but there are multiple aspects that students can get involved in this. Talk to me just a little bit about uh, what skills that students learn when they're involved in First Tech Challenge? Sure, sure. So they're going to learn, most importantly, team building skills. They're going to learn how to work with adults. We bring in a lot of volunteers to help run the tournaments, and we try to bring in those volunteers, and I'm always looking for volunteers. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. Uh, and we're always looking for, but it allows students to meet um, STEM workers within the state of Rhode Island. So we have volunteers that come in to be referees and inspectors and things like that. Um, but the importance of, of being part of a team, learning physics, learning math, learning programming in a fun, fun way. There's even a spot for communicators, you know, for people like us to talk about the robot team and understand uh, if you're in high school or middle school, how to recruit people to be part of the team and how to present what your team has done to the volunteer judges and all that option. So there's really a place for everybody on the team, but it's a really fun way to explore skills that will be used in the future and lots of career opportunities for these students. And so are we looking at this as kind of the future of ed education? Is this what education kind of needs to be about as we're seeing traditional jobs go away and more and more jobs go into the technology aspect and we're looking at automation really kick in? Sure. Sure. Well, we, we hear from a lot of employers at New England Tech. We hear from a lot in, in looking for STEM 
based graduates. Um, certainly any opportunity to explore education in a fun way where you dress up in costumes and you're cheering on people and it's a really fun environment certainly encourages uh, students to look at this. But uh, as far as the future of education, I think anything where you can get somebody involved and really kind of excite them about technology is, is great, is great because they might not have known this was available to them beforehand. So I want to talk a little bit about just how, how these opportunities are kind of paving the way for children, for students, um, into whether it's just majors or education or evolving down the road into careers. Um, I looked at some of the, uh, the website, on the first website, so STEM majors cited by first participants. Um, they were two times as likely to choose a major in science or engineering. Uh, Forty-one percent majored in engineering. These were first participants, right, right. Um, and thirty-three percent of women involved in first programs chose a major in engineering. So right. the statistics in first programs right. show um, that if you're involved in these kind of programs, uh, you're continuing to stay involved. Right. Is that what we're seeing in Rhode well, Island? Yes, and I want to say that we have a wonderful middle school in Pawtucket. Hello, Slater Middle School, and they uh, have young students who then because of their experience, decided they were going to go to William Davies Career and Tech. And so you get to see them grow up in that. We see them come to New England Tech. We see students from other states who are coming to New England Tech who were involved in FIRST. I had a young lady stop in my office and volunteer just because she saw the logo in my office window. Ah, yeah. I've had a young lady from Virginia who's a freshman at Brown reach out to me and desperately want to help because she wants to stay involved. So once you get into the FIRST community, you want to stay. And we do uh, see students then think more about all kinds of engineering and engineering tech technology kinds of career choices. Um, and certainly computers and programming and problem solving are, are great skills that you would use in any career choice. So. So, what, so why are programs like this important now? Why is it important for our kids, whether they choose to do this or they choose to you know, take a coding class at the library right. or right. whatever it is, uh, why why is this important now for kids to get involved? You know, because you are with you're not necessarily with first, but you're with New England Tech, so you're right. seeing these kind of things. Right. Why do you think it's important for kids to get involved in some way or another right now? Well, I think I think students need to know there's a place in the world for everybody, and that if you are someone who likes robots, or you like electronics, or you like three D printing, or you want to explore different kinds of things, there are places for you to. Um, to explore that. Um, these are important because jobs are changing, work is changing. We're seeing that at New England Tech where we are, what employers are asking of our graduates. So if students can get a jump up on that, if they can begin to learn about how to program really quickly or how to build really quickly or how you can solve that problem really quickly. Our students can think on their feet. Uh, when we do our matches, and I, I want you to come and see them, when, when we do the matches, something breaks, they have to work real quickly and be able to fix it. So I'm amazed at them. I, I am amazed at our volunteers who step in. I'm amazed at the teachers who just keep bringing them back year after year and the parents who come and cheer them on. So it's really, there's a place for everybody. You can like soccer and you can be on a soccer team. You can like robots and be on a robot team. And, and students need to know that. You can do both. Right? You could do both. <laughs> you can do soccer and you do robots. Do, and sometimes the robots play soccer. Yeah, which yes. is even cooler, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> I think that's even cooler. Um, talk to me about how we can, uh, and how first, uh, how first Tech Challenge does this. How do we get more girls involved, and how do we encourage more students of diverse backgrounds to get involved in STEM programs? Well, I think number one, ask your schools for it. Go to your guidance offices, go to your school principals, go to your churches and community centers and say, can we start a team? I, a, a team can be anywhere from 6 to 15 students, so we don't need a lot of, um, of people to be on a team. Um, you can meet after school. Um, we do bring in lots of mentors and, and volunteers so students can see women in technology and can yeah. see diversity in technology, but it's a constant struggle 
for anybody because a lot of folks are afraid of it. A lot of young people don't know how much exists out there because they may or may not be exposed to it. So um, yes, we need more women in technology. Yes, we need more diversity in technology. We need more people in technology because there's not enough. We're seeing at New England Tech more and more companies coming to us and asking for graduates that we just don't have enough of, you know, that in some of these tech, high tech career choices. So the jobs do exist. Oh, the high paying jobs exist. They exist. We just need people who can do the work and who understand it. Yeah. And so programs like this are kind, kind of, of give them a ramp up, give them a, give them a, a peek into the future and they, they know what's going on. They, uh, they have a better idea of where they want to be. You know, they're, they're not, maybe not going into college undecided, or maybe they've got an internship in their senior year of high school. Who knows? They're just a little bit more focused because they found something that they love earlier than somebody else, you know? Cool. So how does the, I mean, even if you're starting to do this in, you know, because you, you have the Lego, which is, right, is Lego before, and then you have Lego this the first tech challenge, which is a little bit older, and then there's an, another step in the first program. But can networking start in that middle school and high school level? You know, because you're meeting people, you're bringing in mentors, you're bringing in Absolutely. volunteers. Can that networking start now? Yes, and that's a very important thing, that, uh, important aspect that we're trying to teach the students. And I know the Lego League is doing that as well. They do field trips, they bring in speakers at their qualifiers, they do some great things as well. Um, but we, uh, we bring in volunteers who are working in the industry. So I'm hoping those informal conversations around the, the robot field or in the, the area where they're building their robots or just casual conversations, students and teachers are getting to meet the STEM workers of Rhode Island. So I work really hard to bring in industry volunteers um, and, and that they can just kind of begin to network and share business cards and, and have this informal conversation so they can meet an engineer who likes gaming and who rides a bike and is really cool and that kind of thing. Um, and, and engineering technology doesn't seem so far away for them. And especially when you see someone who looks like you and right. likes things that you, right. that right. you might want to like, it makes it so much easier to get excited about right. something, right? Right, right. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, too, is I read there are scholarship dollars involved, yes. right? Which I think every parent likes. Yes. Maybe the kids yes. don't know what they like, yes. but the parents like, yes. probably. If, they, if you go to the first website, um, uh, firstinspires.org, there is a button that lists scholarship opportunities all over the country. And, and certainly colleges want to recognize and want to attract, including New England Tech, want to attract students who are already ahead of the game and are already excited about engineering and engineering technology and programming and all of those kinds of things. So that's run through the first um, national website and there's great resources there. There's a video and all, all kinds of information on that. But yes, there's great scholarships available. It can't hurt. Even if you can just put it, hey, I was on this team when I was in eighth grade. Well, and I think know, that, yeah, why not? Those are, those are important information that you need to, the students will need to add to their college applications that they put to their resumes for their first job because it really shows uh, more of who you are as a student that beyond going to college to high school and college you participated and you volunteered and you got involved in something larger yeah. I love this so is it too late to join a team if maybe a parent sees this and knows that their kid is interested in programming or coding or building or uh, really likes uh, public speaking, um, but they don't know. Is it too late? Because I know the season has already started. Is it well, too late to get involved? Teams are forming now. Okay. Teams are forming now. Uh, I think the, the most important thing is that I cannot put you on you or your child on a exactly. team. Your, your community has to have a team. So I would encourage high school teachers and I would encourage um, Girl Scout troops and, and church groups and after school groups to consider, boys and girls clubs, to consider starting the teams. Because even if there's not one at the high school or the middle school, maybe at a community group um, in your neighborhood. So really, and I can, I can walk the, the person through starting a team and get that information. You can help um, them that but, yes. but I would say go to your guidance office, go to your school principals and ask if there's a, there's a robot team that you can join at your school. 
Well, Erin Flynn, thank you so much for joining well, us today. It's been such a pleasure. So you know the this. robot field. I would love that. I would All love right. to come and, and get a peek. I know, so we couldn't lug a robot down here today, <laughs> Too but much. um, but we're gonna put links on our website as well, so you can see all of the action. And it's so much fun to watch this, even the animated <laughs> aspect. Yeah. So uh, I know it's a very exciting opportunity in our community. So if you're out there and you're interested, we'll have more information on our website. So thank you so much for joining us, Erin. Thank you very I much. Appreciate it, and good luck to all those first tech challenges.